five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast in partnership with Kidney Care UK. Sharing faith, knowledge, hope, and love. Hi, and welcome to Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. My name is Dee Moore, and I am a stage four kidney warrior. This podcast is dedicated to encourage, educate, and inspire as we explore all aspects of kidney disease, chronic illnesses, and health. If you have any questions or ideas for topics you would like me to cover, please get in contact with me on social media using the handle Diary of a Kidney Warrior. With Christmas less than a week away, if you have CKD, you may be wondering what is safe to eat and drink over the Christmas period. Joining me today to give a guide to having a kidney-friendly Christmas are renal dietitians Angeline and Laura. Angeline and Laura have been working with kidney patients for over 10 years, helping them to make adjustments to their diet according to their level of kidney disease. They are aware of the challenges facing people with CKD and the difficulty of fitting in a healthy diet around this. They love having the opportunity through Kidney Care UK's Kidney Kitchen to help provide a range of recipes for tasty meals which have been nutritionally analysed and adapted, especially for people with CKD. Hi and welcome to Diary of a Kidney Warrior, the podcast. How are you doing today, Angeline? Oh, I'm really well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me and... Hi and welcome to Diary of a Kidney Warrior, the podcast. How are you doing today, Laura? Thanks, Dee. It's good to be here. Yeah, the first podcast I've ever done. So, Oh, that's really exciting. So um, I've got two guests today, so double the fun, double the information. And I'm very excited to be interviewing you today because I have wanted to interview a renal dietitian for the longest amount of time. And not only am I interviewing one renal dietitian I'm interviewing two renal dietitians so it's double the information double the fun so I am really excited about today's interview. So to start with the disclaimer the information shared in this episode should be taken as general advice and should not be taken as specific medical advice. For specific medical advice please consult your renal team and your renal dietitian. So today's episode, we're going to be looking at kidney friendly foods to eat over Christmas. Now, the Christmas period is a time where you want to be more indulgent and have you know, that bit extra and tasty foods that you might not normally eat. But what we want to focus on in this episode is the things that we can eat, not so much looking at what we can't eat, but focusing on what is good, what is safe, what is tasty, what is delicious to eat over the Christmas period. So. We're going to be having a kidney-friendly Christmas. Do you like that one? <laughs> kidney-friendly Christmas. <laughs> okay, so let's kick off with breakfast. So what are the kind of things that are going to be great to have that are kidney-friendly for breakfast starting the day? Nice. When we looked at this, we really focused in on the restrictions that a lot of people mm. have to live with day to day. So potassium or fluid salt and phosphate so the suggestions that we've come up with they're lower in potassium and they're obviously lower in fluid so we've come up with things like brioche so like a brioche bread a lovely brioche bread if you enjoy that in the morning perhaps toasted um you could have your favorite preserves with it like some marmalade or you could go for a different type of bread like a really nice sourdough bread or a nice bagel or english muffin and it doesn't have to be topped with just preserves. We were talking about yeah, other options. savoury options, yeah. like, um, a cream cheese and a smoked salmon, something a bit different. Or like a scrambled egg. Or you could perhaps put a little bit of smoked salmon through the scrambled egg. Mm. So, yeah, just to give it a little bit of depth of flavour. The lovely croissant, a nice real buttery croissant that you can have at breakfast time with your favourite butter and some jam or marmalade you can have with that what else did we have Laura 
I think that's a lot of it kind of a nice porridge sort of something yeah something kind of straightforward but maybe not something you'd have every day so we were talking about how normally with a breakfast we'd recommend people had maybe a piece of fruit with it and they'd go for the lower fat options but knowing that sort of Christmas is more indulgent for most people we'd probably say you know have something that's higher in fat like the the brioche or the croissants and don't worry as much about trying to include that fruit because then that'll save you a bit of potassium for later on in the day sort of when you get to the main event with all the vegetables right there are a few suggestions with some fruit but we've really gone for like the low potassium fruit so if you want to say for example a pancake a really nice pancake that you could make or one that's shop bought either way is absolutely fine you could perhaps add a bit of creme fraiche to it run a little bit of vanilla through that just to give a little bit of sweetness and then perhaps top with some blueberries you could do like a little blueberry compote or just some fresh blueberries and just squash them a little bit just to get the juices out blueberries is one of your low potassium fruits so it's another way of bringing a little bit of fruit into breakfast but not too much potassium and probably sort of trying to avoid anything that was too heavy on the meat side of things so knowing that you're probably going to be having more of that again later on in the day so having something that's not quite so high in protein yeah so yeah really finding the breads that you enjoy whether it's sourdough bread english muffin bagel crumpets brioche by doing that what you're saving yourself is your potassium but also you're saving yourself your fluids. So some people are on a fluid restriction. And if that's the case, they don't want to be using milk to make cereals or porridge in the mornings to go with more of the drier foods and save some of your fluid for a drink later on in the day. Actually, a bit lower in phosphate then as well, a lot of the, the ones we've suggested. Although if you do take a phosphate binder, it's probably best to take one. Yeah. But yeah, with, with all the kind of indulgent higher fat things. So if you add a bit of cream to the porridge, that's going to be a bit more of a treat. And it's also lower in phosphate as well. So what kinds of porridge are good to have? Oh, any, you know, a nice oat based porridge is perfect. And you mentioned as well, when we were talking before the podcast about a cornmeal porridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be fine as well. Yeah, those are good kind of staples yeah. to start the day with. Yeah, either. Absolutely fine. Obviously, you are adding fluid. If somebody's on a fluid restriction, it's taking away maybe a little bit of fluid that you might want to have later if you want to enjoy an alcoholic drink at the main event, at your main meal. Aperitifs. Um, <laughs> if people do A that. sherry of some description or, <laughs> yeah. An after dinner drink. Yeah. So it's thinking ahead a little bit more, isn't it, Laura? Really it's thinking about what do I want to enjoy on this particular day? Mm. And how can I make sure I get the opportunity to enjoy it? So I can still enjoy a, an extra drink or something slightly higher in potassium at lunchtime. And by doing some of the suggestions that we've mentioned for breakfast, going for more of the bready type options you know different bread options that are out there and finding the bread that you enjoy so whether that's a really lovely good quality sourdough white bread or some rye bread or you enjoy a really buttery croissant at breakfast or a nice brioche which is slightly sweeter or a crumpet or a wholemeal english muffin or a plain english muffin there's so many different options out there and by using those you're saving yourself fluid that you can have later in the day And you're also saving yourself some potassium that you can save for later in the day. But as Laura rightly said, it depends if breakfast is like the main event for you. And if it's a big event and that's how you celebrate, then it might be that you want to have the more indulgent fruits or vegetables at breakfast and limit them later in the day. Exactly. So I guess there is a little bit of planning involved, isn't there? Just about thinking about where you want to be having the treats rather than at all three meals <laughs> what, what have you missed the most and what would you enjoy the most isn't it it's, it's about what, yeah what would make it feel as normal as possible for you on Christmas day and it it is a challenge for people isn't it trying to definitely um kind of think about making sure that they have a good time and enjoy it but don't overdo it with things like potassium 
potassium and fluid probably being the most difficult ones for somebody who's on hemodialysis, knowing that they've got an increased break in between their dialysis sessions. So that's the kind of thing that could cause problems. Yeah, and you want to enjoy Christmas, but not to the degree that you're carrying far too much fluid and it's making you short of breath and you're very uncomfortable, potentially requiring any sort of admission. And the same with potassium. You want to enjoy those foods, but not to the point where it's going to take you to hospital, essentially. Yeah. It's like a balancing act, really, that you make your decision at the start of the day. Okay, the breakfast is the most important meal to me. So I'm going to have my my treat, so to speak. I hate that word, but more indulgent in my breakfast or my main meal is most important to me. So I'll have a lighter breakfast so I can focus on the meal. So it sounds like, yeah, you're taking away yeah, like one so you can build it on the other. Yeah. So when we say lighter breakfast, it doesn't have to be lighter in terms of lowering calories or lowering fat or, or any of those. It just has to be lighter in terms of fluid and potassium. So I guess you just don't want to go into the day just eating what everyone else is having and thinking, oh, this is great. And then suddenly get to the next meal and think, oh, I don't know whether I might have already overdone it with my potassium and I really wanted to have this as well. So I guess that's the other thing, isn't it? We're talking a lot about Christmas as the day in terms of kind of what you might have on Christmas Day, but you might spread out those sort of, I don't want to use the word treat now, you said you didn't like the word treat, but you might (laughs) want to spread that out over a few days, mightn't you? So it might be that actually you make do with a smaller breakfast and a larger dinner on Christmas Day, but on Boxing Day, you perhaps move things around a little bit. Yeah. Breakfast is the main event and it's just a snack later. Yeah. yeah. Have a brunch or something. Yeah. Yeah. So those are really ideas that hopefully you still feel like you're enjoying something a bit indulgent on Christmas day, but you're not overdoing the potassium or the fluid before your main meal. And there's a good selection of options there that you've mentioned that I hadn't really considered myself really. I'm going to have to try some of the brioche and sourdough bread options they sound really good you know pancakes porridge fruit to give it a bit of sweetness as well so it's a good start to the day yeah and the about those is they are filling so you don't have to worry about oh I'm eating this but I'm gonna be starving later on yeah we have got some um, breakfast options coming on kidney kitchen um, soon as well I mean the idea is that we've talked about today they're also in the recipe book that kidney care uk have a pdf of our recipe book that the nhs trust that we work at we created a recipe book and kidney care uk very kindly gave us a grant to have it printed but also hold it on their website so people can find the pdf and find all those breakfast ideas that we've suggested as well today fantastic so you heard it listeners check out kidney care uk's website they've got the kidney kitchen and also angeline and laura's cookbook where you can get kidney friendly recipes so do check that out so after we've had a tasty breakfast we're looking at starters and snacks what kind of things are good options so good options are things like pastry based options and anything with a cream cheese to it cranberries are very good because they're low in potassium so we have got some recipes would you would you like me to mention some recipes yeah are on the kidney kitchen website so a few years ago we tested a brie and cranberry parcel recipe we put it in our own recipe book but also kidney care yeah i love those i think marks and spencers do a version of it as well yeah. they used to they're really easy to make so it's a phyllo pastry which you can buy so you don't have to make that and buy the brie and you just put cranberry sauce in it and you wrap them and bake them. And they're sort of, you know, the cheese melts. Into Ooh, lovely. Yeah. I <laughs> know, you're getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what are, all this talk about food, I'm really getting hungry. Yeah, they're fantastic starters. I mean, you can make really mini ones and make them into little snacks, couldn't you? Also, mm. it's like a little party food and buffet food. Cranberries are the kind of silver lining aren't they for the people that are on a potassium restriction because cranberries are a lot lower in potassium than most of the other fruits so it's, it's a good that they're around at christmas yeah yeah the, the perfect <laughs> one to be around. use dried cranberries and some of the other recipes as well yeah we've got a couple of other recipes here we've got a salmon and chive pate so if somebody wants something a little bit more 
indulgent. Yeah. So again, it's using salmon. It's not smoked salmon. It's a tinned salmon. So it's not as salty, okay. um, which will make you less thirsty, of course, which is great for anyone that's on a fluid restriction. And then we add cream cheese, so like the Philadelphia or the soft white cream cheese to it, which is a, a low phosphate cream cheese. And then we thought perhaps they could be served on blinis. Yeah. Yeah, like little mini pancakes. Okay. Yeah, or crackers if people prefer them. And I think one year we we did make some sort of little tortilla crisps or something. Yeah. Either from, from pita from breads. Pita breads. Yeah. yeah. So again, both of those recipes are in the recipe book on the Kidney Care UK website that we created. So the brie and cranberry parcels is on Kidney Kitchen. And the salmon pate with the pita bread. Sort of like crisps, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, obviously normal potato crisps are a little bit of a difficult one because they're high in potassium and high in salt. But yeah, if you can just sort of toast up some pita breads, that's a fairly good alternative. Yeah. And there's things like a pesto cream dip as well in the recipe book. Yeah, these things are easy to make. I think do you like pesto? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I with pesto, I was always worried about the salt content in pesto. Yeah. It's really good that you've got that. I'm like, yes, pesto, that's low in salt, great. So if you use maybe a whole jar of pesto in something, then of course it's going to be high in salt and going to contain things like pine nuts and parmesan, which adds to the potassium. But because these recipes are using only such small amounts and they're spreading the flavour through the cream cheese, so to make this pesto dip, you use a little bit of pesto and then you mix it through the cream cheese. It dilutes it, if you like, but you've still got that lovely pesto flavour, which is delicious. And that's a dip. Again, that would work really well with the pita breads. Yeah, I was thinking you can get like little mini volivant cases and things as well. That yeah. You can fill with some of these things. Yeah. If you want to put out a nice sort of array of, sort of low potassium snacks for people to have. Although I would say, you know, if you have more than a couple of days, you probably ought to take extra phosphate binder if you do have a phosphate binder. I'd agree. Um, yeah. I mean, just make use of your phosphate binders. Yeah. You know, over the festive period, just really to avoid being symptomatic with a high phosphate, which can be really unpleasant itching. Mm. You don't want to be in that position. You can avoid it. Mean, it allows it. you just to be a bit more flexible. Yeah, a bit it? more indulgent. Yeah. And not to have yeah. to worry so much about it. Yeah. Yeah, so the pesto dip one is in the recipe book as well. And then we've got things like carrot and coriander soup. Bearing in mind that carrot and coriander soup is going to be fluid. So anybody that's on a fluid restriction, if they're not bothered about alcoholic drinks, they might prefer a soup. And that might be their fluid indulgence for the day. So again, it comes back to that planning ahead. What is it that's important to you? And what is it that you want to have? A smaller portion, but you know, go for it with things like croutons and things like that with it. Yeah. It's a special meal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Croutons is mm. a great idea. So the carrot and coriander soup is in the recipe book on the Kidney Care UK website. That's our recipe book. In terms of like little snacky ideas, we've got um, more sweet snacky ideas. So those were more savoury starters, but we've got some snacks here. I guess those people Ch- that are having a, a later Christmas dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Might want the sweeter things to keep going. We've got a cherry shortbread, which apparently is what Laura's family traditionally start there. Oh, my day. dad's family always had just normal shortbread for breakfast on Christmas Day. I've never come across anyone else that does it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a recipe that just uses the Bessier cherries in a, a shortbread just to make a, a bit more festive. We've got the jammy sponge tarts. As a so it's like of... a take, isn't it, on mince pies but yeah without the mince meat and I've been known to do that if I've run out of mince meat it's yeah. <laughs> to use jam so um Great. I guess you can add other sort of preserves and flavors I think in some kind of like apple and cinnamon type yeah. nutmeg type flavors yeah all really nice and festive aren't they that's such a great idea but basically the jammy sponge tarts are like a jam tart but they've got a sponge layer on the top so it's just something a little bit more different mm. and yeah like like you said you could add something that's got more of a spiced jam rather than like a strawberry jam to it yeah yeah so it's both of those around isn't there I, mean, I would have thought of, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite easy to get hold of so the cherry shortbread and the jammy sponge charts they're in the recipe book on kidney care uk the recipe book that we created 
And then we have got the very traditional Christmas cake and mince pies, but we've got low potassium versions of those that have been created and are, I think they're filmed. Are they both filmed or are they photographed? I think they've just been photographed, but yeah, they've got sort of all the steps of being photographed and they've all been tried to make sure they all turn out okay and we've had great ideas for decorating them. So yeah, if you've got somebody in the house that wants to do something, then that's a good option, isn't it? But for some people, they might get away with sort of one of those trio, I guess, the mince pies or the Christmas pudding or the Christmas cake in a small amount in the day. It's just being aware not to overdo it with those types of things. I was thinking that the other sort of traditional one, sort of making with the kids is like the gingerbread, isn't it? The old gingerbread house. Oh, the gingerbread's the perfect one. Or yeah, gingerbread biscuits. Any of the recipes that you find out there for gingerbread biscuits would be great. Yeah. They, they'll all be low. Keep those in the biscuits in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Kidney Care UK or Kidney Kitchen has a Christmas cake and some mince pies that are low in potassium. If people are more indulgent with that type of food. It's really awful when you go around the dialysis unit before Christmas and you kind of like, you don't want to say it. You say, oh, dried fruit is something to be careful of. And you're saying it under your breath. And then I always get relieved when someone says, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't have to be the Grinch after all then. <laughs> yeah, the food place. Yeah. But it's knowing that there are other options you can still indulge in and and hopefully people will enjoy because we have had really positive feedback with the recipes yeah the Christmas cake and the and the pudding yeah yeah they're definitely quite popular I mean they're the ones that Laura's worked on mainly aren't they yeah you've done a lot of work on them like the dried cranberries and a lot of sort of dietitians in in all the units around the UK often produce some kind of Christmas leaflet that's got different recipes and we use things like tinned fruit that's been drained off because that's lower in potassium. So the difficult thing, I suppose, is getting the texture, but it's easy to get lots of other flavour in there and try and get it as close as possible to the real thing. The colour is the other thing as well. The dried fruit seems to add a lot of colour to it. So when you use different fruits, it can be harder to it's a bit more get insipid, the, the colour the yeah. same. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, but don't be put off by the colour. I'm sure it's still very... Still got the Christmas yeah. taste. You'd only have it at Christmas. <laughs> so if we're looking at good options for main meals, what's out there? <laughs> so, well, the, the obvious, the most obvious is the full Christmas turkey with all the trimmings, isn't it? Really? And, well, who doesn't want to have that on Christmas Day? Yeah, the smell of it cooking. Yeah. Mm. Um, or some people might prefer roast lamb or roast beef. Turkey might not be for them or goose or whatever they might prefer that so so the very first kidney kitchen I went to was when chef was doing the full Christmas dinner I was amazed when he was making up the stuffing sort of you know a lot of us might buy the stuffing or you get the packet and you sort of add water to it and he just did it with the onion the sage the breadcrumbs the butter and he made it look so easy just rolled it up and off it went into the oven so I think that's a really good one to sort of cast your eye over and that's a videoed one as well. So it's worth going on to Kidney Kitchen's website and seeing the full Christmas dinner and how to make it with yeah. all the trimmings. For anyone that's sort of maybe got CKD and gets some of these strange tastes in the mouth that people often talk about, he did lots of other seasoning with the vegetables. So there was um, fennel with some things, there was sage in things. Oh, nice. um, the potatoes had rosemary with them. And I actually did try those for my family. They were quite a hit. So they're lovely sort of different flavours on the vegetables. And there were the sprouts there. I mean, I'm not a big sprout fan myself, oh, I but know. I do say, you know, if, if that doesn't make your Christmas dinner, then you can have a couple of sprouts. <laughs> and they don't just have to be boiled to nothing. You can add other flavours to it as well. The message would be to still boil your vegetables. Like Laura said, you don't have to boil them to within an inch of their life, but still try and boil them in plenty of water. And the reason for boiling them is because it draws out potassium from the vegetables. So it doesn't take away all of the potassium, but it will take away some of it. The potassium will leach out into the water. And so, so that's another key message is don't use that water in your gravy because it's drain full it. of potassium. <laughs> yeah, drain it away. Don't use that. It's a very traditional way of using up the water from your vegetables is to make up a stock or a gravy. Yeah, definitely throw it away. Discard it. So when you're saying about boiling vegetables, which vegetables are you talking about specifically? 
So I think the ones on the kidney kitchen. So I think with carrots, so they got some sprouts. Yeah. And so obviously the potatoes have been boiled first as well, and then they've been tossed in um, flour and and rosemary. But really, almost every vegetable, if you boil it, will leach out some potassium. And and I guess that's another good myth just to mention at this point is a lot of people feel they have to soak the vegetables or potatoes overnight to get rid of extra potassium. Or double boil their potatoes. Or double boil them. And those are quite sort of old-fashioned messages now because we know that as long as you boil them well once in plenty of water, it will get rid of the same amount of potassium. So um, people can save that extra step of soaking or double boiling and just boil them well once. What you'll notice is with the kidney kitchen roast, in it, you know, the Christmas lunch, the potatoes are chopped quite small. So they're more cubed, aren't they, rather than yeah. bigger. And so by doing that, it allows more potassium to... Yeah, it's a greater to surface tra- area, isn't yeah. it, to, to lose potassium. Yeah, if you've got smaller potatoes, it's going to come out quicker into the water. So you don't have to boil them until they're super soft. You just parboil them and then you can roast them. You do want to boil your potatoes and you do want to boil the vegetables that you're having on Christmas Day. So people have different preferences for their veg on Christmas Day, don't they? I mean, some might be cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, carrots. You just want to make sure you're boiling them, basically. But I think the great thing about the recipes on Kidney Kitchen is it gives you an idea of how to enhance the flavour through some of the herbs that Laura mentioned earlier. Yeah. So your sages and your rosemary. And- yeah. And things like the fennel, fennel seeds. Oh, yeah, that was lovely. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Rather than adding things like pancetta with your sprouts, which is a very salty meat, isn't it? And is more likely to make somebody thirsty later in the day, which you don't want if you're on a fluid restriction. So being able to flavour it with some fennel seeds or some sage just gives it a different type of flavour. And that's those simple things, isn't it? To keep the salt down by doing things like making up your own stuffing, um, using different herbs and spices, using an unsalted butter rather than a normal butter. So just all those small things do come together and help. And that's why perhaps sort of having that recipe available is really helpful for some people to watch in advance and, and realise the small gains they can make. To keep themselves safe. Yeah. yeah. But still enjoy their food. And I think yeah. it's good with that meal to have yeah lots of variety. So we had to be fairly careful with the portion of the meat from what I remember on that and if you want things like pigs and blankets as well you just need to remember not to have tons and tons of the meat side of things and have your vegetables and your potatoes as well. So where does fish fall in line with that? Is fish something that people would quite traditionally have for Christmas? Is that what you're saying? Well some people might not eat red meat. Red meat yeah. Eat fish or chicken instead. So I was just thinking in terms of those who might not have the roast lamb or beef or me personally, I'm not really into turkey myself. So I'm more of a Mm. in fish type person on Christmas. So I was wondering about fish. So it's no different, really. Yeah, we kind of treat it quite similarly, Mm. similarly, I suppose. But yeah, I think that sounds really nice, sort of um, a nice sort of piece piece of of salmon. salmon, Yeah, of um, a white fish or. um, Yeah. Yeah. Anything just sort of baked nicely with some different flavours. Yeah, I mean, I would make use of things like some lemon juice, dill, you know, fresh herbs over fish, lemon, black pepper, lime, if you like those flavours. I would make use of something that's natural rather than adding any salt. And there are a few them. sort of fish dishes sort of on Kidney Kitchen because being that's filmed funny. in Cornwall, <laughs> <laughs> fish is uh, yeah, quite high on their agenda. And and yeah, and our chef used to be Rick Stein's head chef. So being a bit of a fish, yeah. yeah. Lots of fish recipes. Lots of fish recipes. (laughs) Um, But yeah, in terms of, do you mean in terms of quantity, where does it fit in? Similar to the the meat on the plate, it it probably is, I I would say, treat it quite the same. Yeah, really. Yeah. You have a nice balanced meal with it. And again, I keep saying phosphate binders. I should be quiet about them. I'm sure people know to take the (laughs) phosphate binders with the main meal. But do take them because it's worth mm. it, not just to keep your phosphate low, but to prevent those symptoms, those unpleasant itchiness symptoms. You don't want to be going through Christmas feeling no, uncomfortable. No, definitely. It can affect people sleeping. So, yeah, if you're not getting a good night's sleep, you can't enjoy the parties. Very important. If you're on phosphate binders, take your phosphate binders. <laughs> <Thank> you, <Dean. laughs> so 
after we've had our main meal, there's always a pudding to look forward to. Yes, and sometimes many puddings. Or well, sometimes <laughs> a break before you have the pudding. Yeah, <laughs> good, a good hour and a half, two hour break before the puddings come out. So many puddings, Dee. We've got loads of puddings. Yeah, loads of ones that would be really good for, yeah. for Christmas. So, and all of the ones, I think all of these that I'm going to mention are on the Kidney Kitchen website. And they're all low potassium and low phosphate, but would probably still need a phosphate binder. So we've got easy baked pears. That might be something really light. If somebody just wants something really light, I just thought it's a lovely, it's baked pear. It's got spices. It's got ginger biscuits broken up over it. You can have it with cream or with creme fraiche. And it's really simple. because we so um, simple. We did it when we had the young adults group were doing their it's like their weekend. Yeah. So they have regular weekends, it's but we couldn't do it an in online person. version and everyone had a go. And even my kids, you know, who were six and eight, actually really enjoyed them. So it's a nice one for all the family, the baked pairs. And if you're not much of a cook in the kitchen or if you don't like to spend hours in the kitchen, they're really simple and straightforward to do. And we've got Eaton Mess. I know it's quite often considered more summery, but mm. I think you can eat it any time of year. It's like a winter berry thing. Can't yeah, you, you could. Berry, yeah, definitely. Do. And that was my first kidney kitchen. And it was the first kidney kitchen that we ever did where we did a salmon recipe and we did eaten mess. And it's got a really nice twist on it as well. And again, it's got crumbled um, ginger biscuits over it. So it's a cordial in it. Yeah, it had like um, an, I don't think it was like a raspberry presse type that we made with raspberries. And then you can keep that in the fridge or you could have it on your pancakes Ooh, time with some creme yeah. fraiche yeah it's yeah. like a coulis yes that's probably yeah. what it's called so it's worth you make that in advance and then you can pour that over these and mess but you could have had it at breakfast with your pancakes oh. and the creme fraiche yeah there's a sort of thing as well that's quite strong in flavor so you don't really need very much of it exactly yeah so it's not going to be super high in potassium although it's made with raspberries you just use a small amount yeah so creme brulee which i've never made myself before so I don't know how tricky it is. Nor is it more of a... I've made it and we made it in Kidney Kitchen when I was there. Oh. And I think, yeah, as long as you've got plenty of eggs, you'll be... <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Be all right. Yeah, but yeah, they can be made in advance as well. I suppose it, like, that's what you want at Christmas is some of the things that are easy that can be made in advance that you might be able to do in the morning or the night before just to save yourself some time on the day to open your presents. Mm. Yeah, we've got a lemon tart, so that's that's quite nice. And again, it's really, it's really sharp if you want that sharp flavour, yeah. especially if you're suffering with any taste problems. It can cut through that, can't it? And for people that don't want to cook, it is something you probably can buy in the shops, sort of most Definitely. supermarkets. Yeah, or like a lemon thing. cheesecake or a lemon tart. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And then we've got this lovely gingerbread Christmas log, which... Um, Laura has made when we were testing the recipes for our recipe book that was one that you tested wasn't it Laura I think you find yeah a lot of dietitians do like to cook as well and we do like to play around with food and and see whether we can find things that that our patients will enjoy and yeah the gingerbread log it did take quite a lot of work (laughs) but it was worth it it turned out really well so if you're somebody that likes home baking and you're into that and you still want to be able to create something special for a loved one that you know is going to be restricted on the diet or... that's your showstopper one yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> for when you're doing the bake-off that's on the kidney kitchen website as well as it, our book as well isn't it so yeah and the profiteroles that we've got those they're quite a, a common one aren't they for christmas you see profiteroles in the shops and actually they are a lot easier to make than you think so i think chef ripley takes you through how to make the profiteroles in one of the kidney kitchens yes yeah is it a filmed one or is it yeah. a, i think it is a filmed one because i was lucky doing... enough to try them <laughs> <laughs> afterwards right <laughs> but like you rightly say you don't have to make them you could buy them as well you know, if you're not into cooking or if you just want a really easy enjoyable christmas and something that you can just stick in the fridge and bring out when you're ready to eat it, that's a super one. Mm. Yeah. And then finally, the Christmas pudding cheesecake. I don't know if you've seen this one, Dee, but it's really tasty. Are you a Christmas pudding fan? Not a Christmas <laughs> pudding fan, but a cheesecake okay. fan, yes. Cheesecake fan. Okay. 
Well, if somebody out there is a Christmas pudding fan, but they're worried that they can't have too much of it, I think the great thing about this cheesecake is it blends a real Christmas pudding through it. So it's got the flavour of a Christmas pudding throughout the whole cheesecake. And it's delicious. It is so delicious. And it is quite straightforward to make as well. I think that one's a filmed one. So yeah, that I have think people that don't have to be on a low potassium diet say they're going to have that <laughs> for their pudding on Christmas Day because it's it is. Really well, nice. I've had it for my pudding on Christmas Day before because it's so yeah, it's mm. so delicious. I like the Christmas. Well, it's like having two puddings in one, really. So you're getting two for the <laughs> price of one on this one: a cheesecake and a Christmas pudding. So <laughs> it's great, and it's got oranges on the top, or sort yeah, of like clementines. Clementines, yeah, yeah, on the top. So it's got a little bit of that citrus flavour coming through as well. So hopefully that's given you lots of options. Sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And it's good that you've got the website to refer to with the videos or the photos. Because when I'm cooking something new, I like to have a video to follow. It's good that that's there, that people can just click on, follow, choose what they want. And yeah, it just sounds amazing. I'm just getting more and more hungry as this, um, (laughs) hearing all these foods that I can eat on Christmas Day. So when we're looking at like party foods or buffet type foods, what kind of things are good to have? Yeah, so if you're putting together a buffet, um, things like volivants are good, like the pastry these volivants and then like some maybe some cream cheese fillings. Yeah, some or, of the snack things we talked about earlier with the starters. Yeah. It'd be like the little pastry things. Parcels. Yeah. Those types of things. Say, for example, it's a more plated buffet, then it might be things like couscous. Mm, nice salads, yeah. Couscous like a salad. rice salad or a pasta salad. Yeah. They sound brilliant. Yeah. Um, just things, simple things like little sandwiches that are made up. So it could be you know, the delicate types of sandwiches that you might find on a cream tea, for example. Just some cream cheese and cucumber sandwiches or some salmon sandwiches, tuna, that mm-hmm. sort of thing that you could have. When it comes to things like crisps, go for more of like the wheat or the corn based crisps. And avoid the potato crisps. But still remember, they, they are going to be a little bit more salty, so you sort of can't go too mad on them. Um, and perhaps try that pita bread. Mm-hmm. Pita bread, one that we talked about earlier. And some of the dips that you might want to go for are more of like the taxiki type mm-hmm. yogurty based dips rather than, say, a guacamole or a salsa. You probably want to stay clear of those. And go for yeah. more of the cream. Depends on how much you're having, cream I suppose, cheese. doesn't it? Like um, it does with everything, really, doesn't it? If you yeah. think, I was yeah. thinking that it's about the balance, isn't it? So you know, enjoying a little bit of those things, but knowing the ones to avoid overeating. But if you've got sort of something with a strong flavour, and you're just having like a teaspoon on, on a dip or something, goodness me, that's not going to push you <laughs> over, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. I thought you were going to say who would stick to a teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any kinds of hummus that we can have? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't see a problem with hummus at all. Hummus is going to be high in phosphate, Mm -hmm. um, just like any other protein, like your meat, your fish, your eggs, or any other beans, pulses, or lentils. But yeah, absolutely have the hummus. And hummus goes great with the pita bread crisps Mm -hmm. that we mentioned earlier as well. Yeah, things to, to dip. Yeah, and, you know, there's lots of varieties, isn't there, of hummus these days. So you could go for, like, the peppered one or the jalapeno one. I think you might onion sort of one. choose a bit of, like, a red pepper or yellow pepper, just a few sticks of that or a little bit of cucumber to sort of go with it as well. Yeah, I mean, green peppers are the lowest in potassium, but they're a bit bitter, aren't they? So, mm. yeah, some reds or, or yellow peppers just to dip in them or the pizza breads. You need that yeah. bit of colour on the buffet, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> It can yeah. turn too beige sometimes, I think. <laughs> and things like breadsticks or also, you know, if you don't want to be making the pita bread crisps, then things like breadsticks are a good option, a dipping option as well. And then the final thing I've got on my list of things is the pickled onions. Pickled onions come <laughs> out, don't they, at Christmas time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the chutneys and the pickle. And... Yeah. Yeah, we're moving into Boxing Day now, aren't we, Piccadilly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, it, and in terms of, if you are having a party and 
you know, we've talked about savoury foods, really, haven't we? But of course, you're going to have some sweet foods going on the buffet too. So things like meringues, pavlovas, eaten mess, they're still really good. Shortbreads or sort of more creamy type gattos are fine. You probably want to steer clear of anything that's super, super chocolatey. Yeah, and I think we steered away from things like trifle just because of it's got a higher fluid content generally, the custard and the jelly and things in it. But again, you know, if you're still passing urine well and you don't have to worry about fluids and things like trifles are an option. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's so difficult to, to kind of give this generalised advice because the diet is very different for everybody, depending on their stage of CKD and their residual kidney function and the type of dialysis they might be having, other treatments they're having. So it's really being aware of what's your fluid restriction what are my figures like for potassium? You know, are they particularly high or are they normally running quite on the low side of normal? In which case you can be a bit more indulgent. If they're particularly high, then you might need to be more careful. So it's very personal. Yeah, and I guess that, you know, do ask your dietitian if, mm. if you are wondering about whether you can get away with certain foods, then you know, we're always happy to discuss it and sort of focus on what people can have and, and how that balances out over the day. It's not unusual, actually. We do get the old patient that will phone up and say, is it OK if I have this for dinner? <laughs> they're not <laughs> sure if it's, if it's a food that's OK because it's not in their diet information or it's not on the wall charts that we've provided them with. And so they don't know if it's OK. And we're very happy to check bloods and say, yes, of course, go home and enjoy that for dinner. Yeah. So to that point, if you check out the episode on understanding your renal blood test results, it may help in terms of understanding what your levels should be, especially in regards to potassium. So do check out that episode. Being aware of your figures can be so helpful in staying on top of them and just knowing what they should be and what they are currently. And we tend not to give advice on one-off figures. It's useful to know what they're like over a period of time. What's the trend with your figures generally? Yeah, and I think it's useful to, like Laura says, knowledge is power. So if you can look at your figures and understand what's going on it really helps you make food choices absolutely so for some people who might like to have a little bit of a drink and when I'm saying drink I mean alcohol what are the alcohol options that are safe is that the right word (laughs) (laughs) the first thing I usually say is we we can talk about the sort of potassium and, and fluid options with alcohol but People probably should check with their doctor about the medication they're taking because that can sometimes be a factor as well. Mm. But we're definitely not adverse to people enjoying a drink at Christmas. Absolutely not. (laughs) No. Or any other time during the year if they (laughs) want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose the important thing is, are you on a fluid restriction? If so, you probably want to be mindful about the volume of alcohol you're going to have. And if For example, a lot of people may be following a a one litre of fluid restriction and having a pint down the pub in the morning is going to significantly ease into that and really affect you for the rest of the day. So it's about perhaps adapting your choices and going for something that you're still going to enjoy, but which would be a lower volume. So a glass of wine or a spirit that you can have a mixer with, but a small mixer. So being aware of the amount of fluid that you can have and perhaps planning what drinks you're going to have that day and how your fluid's going to be divvied up across the day, if you like, in terms of your drinks. And then I suppose the other thing is potassium, isn't it really? Yeah. That's, that's important. So staring away from the higher potassium alcoholic drinks. So going for White wines or rosé wines over and above a red wine will help keep your potassium down. So are there any drinks that are an absolute, I mean, I know that I said I really want to focus on what we can rather than what we can't, but are there any alcoholic drinks that are a real no-no? I mean, there's some that are definitely higher in potassium than others. So things like cider or like your real ales will be much higher in potassium. So you're better off going for like a lager and perhaps avoid going for a whole pint of lager mm. and just stick with maybe yeah, half a pint. Yeah. Um, people often laugh when we say, yeah, go for the spirits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> than, 
than the other drinks. And, I mean, um, gin's really taken off, hasn't it, in the last yeah. few years. There's uh, so many varieties that you can Yeah. Get. And a lot of people have tonic water because it helps with cramps and things anyway, don't they? Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting one. But it is the mixes you have to be more sort of mindful of. So we know that a lot of the fruit juices tend to be higher in potassium. But again, sort of the cranberry comes back into its own because cranberry juice tends to be lower in potassium as a mixer. Or sort of say plain like um, ginger ales and lemonades. Usually we say try to avoid cola, but if you want something with cola around Christmas, it's that's not going to be the end of the world either. So cola is pure phosphate, so it's not potassium. It's more. Yeah. You looked at the ingredients of cola. It's basically phosphate. Right. I'm not giving away any trade secrets. I don't think <laughs> by revealing that. But, um, yeah, and it's very that phosphate is very easily absorbed. So be mindful if you're not on a phosphate restriction. Yeah. Then. But it might be as most of the year you try to avoid it, and then at Christmas, you know, you say, right, I'm going to have that Coca Cola, and that might be that you, you'd have that with a rum or some drinks. Yeah. yeah. So generally, spirits are lower in potassium, and of course, they're much lower in volume. Um, what you have to be mindful of is what you're going to add to your spirit. So if it's a tonic water, that's great. Or a ginger beer or a lemonade, that's also absolutely fine. But when you're getting into things like the fruit juices, the best option would be cranberry juice. And I would avoid things like tomato juice or Definitely, orange juice. Yeah, pineapple juice. Pine- yeah, all of those ones should be avoided. But cranberry juice can still be, be enjoyed with a spirit. If you're more of a wine drinker, then maybe stick to a white or a rosé. Red is higher in potassium. If you're more of a lager or stout drinker, then stick with the lager rather than the stout or the cider. Yeah, and keep it to a smaller from the smaller, smaller bottle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so you can still have a tipple. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of other things out there now, aren't there? Sort of some of the nice flavoured tonics are quite nice on their own, sort of without the um, without the alcohol. The alcohol well, you still feel like you're having a beverage, don't you? Because it's the, uh, an alcoholic well, drink. Prosecco is quite popular now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think anyone could drink a lot of that in one go. With all the bubbles. So the fizz, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Things like port, I think it's probably worth mentioning. Yeah, because some people might have an after dinner port or a before dinner sherry. So port's fairly high in potassium, but sherry, sort of middle. Yeah. middle. And, yeah. and you tend to have them in quite small volumes anyway, yeah, don't you? That's, so yeah, yeah. As long as nobody a little fills sherry your glass, glass yeah. you're okay. Yeah. I mean, you probably have less sherry than you do wine, don't you, really? Yeah. So, yeah, I think overall. probably is another point around Christmas, isn't it, about... You know, the, the people around you, sometimes they're, they're trying to be generous and they're trying to be kind and they are trying to keep offering you extras. And as long as you explain to them why you have to be careful and it might avoid some awkward conversations or feeling that you have to have it because you don't want to be rude or. Yeah, I think it's probably something that can come up, isn't it? People are too polite to say no, but actually people, relatives, friends, they do understand if you just tell them that I have to be a little bit careful because of my kidney condition. Yeah, it's worth certainly, you know, people going around filling your glass up all the time. That can be a really awkward, awkward yeah. one, can't it? So it's worth just knowing what volume is in your glass when you first have that drink as well. Yeah. So whether or not you've got a glass at home that you take with you <laughs> or you just have a quiet word with whoever's doing the yeah, drinks. Yeah. Yeah, have you got a smaller glass yeah have you got or, yeah and just try and take it slow isn't it but it, that's that's easier said than done because you know with anything food or drink when it's right in front of you it can be hard to very tempting yeah, yeah. try to say no it's all about thinking Keeping... about how you're going to feel as well as possible for the whole christmas season not just the day isn't it yes and that goes for everybody not just kidney patients i should think yeah <laughs> yeah very true so I know that you wanted to talk about things to be careful of. So yeah. what would that be? Well, I think eating out might be. Yeah, so eating, to mention eating out, you have a, a bit less control, don't you, over the portion sizes, the, the salt in the cooking. The cooking uh, method. The way it's being cooked. Yeah, so your vegetables, your potatoes might not be boiled. Yeah, it can be... Um, good to sort of contact places in advance and find out a little bit more 
about what's on offer to make sure there is something that you feel comfortable having because you do want to enjoy going out if you want to and I think they're so used to that now as well aren't they because so many people have allergies and there's so many issues around allergens now they're so used to people phoning up and saying they've got a dietary requirement yeah and sometimes they're quite interested then aren't they because it it, it's, it's not common is it to find that you've got somebody who's got kidney disease and that they have to follow sort of slightly different diet so people who can be interested then about because it's not people what they can know, do for you, know. you yeah absolutely mm. and it, most people are very most places I would have thought are very accommodating yeah and would be willing to perhaps do the vegetables slightly differently or some potatoes slightly differently for that individual yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's a, a good one yeah and I mean I think whatever desserts are on offer the, the main message is probably that there's probably something from the list that we've provided that's yeah. very similar on a menu yeah. somewhere yeah uh, as we've noticed not everybody yeah. likes the, the dried fruit and the traditional Christmas things anyway so there usually is an alternative yeah and there's obviously um, lots of vegetarian vegan options with different things probably best to avoid lots of dried fruit yeah I think nuts is usually the one I would say to be careful of try to avoid the nuts where and, you can. and the chocolate yeah, so I, I I never tell anyone to avoid chocolate altogether because I think that would be a really hard life. But um... I'd find it hard for sure. <laughs> I get, I I I think we're probably similar. We probably go for like if you're going to have chocolate, like the chocolate fitterals is a really good example, isn't it? Because it's pastry cream and a little mm. bit of chocolate. Whereas if it was a full chocolate gato or a huge chocolate brownie with lots of chocolate in it, that's very different. Yeah, so just, just sort of small amounts of chocolate, isn't it? Yeah, and, um, so you're still getting that flavour, yeah. so you can still enjoy it. Yeah, And I, think, I, I guess the other thing that had gone through my head when we were thinking about this was, um, again, we, we talked very much about Christmas as a day, but actually the Christmas period can extend and extend for some people. Mm. And if, say, you've um, tried to lose weight to get on the transplant list, or you've recently had a transplant, you just need to have that awareness, don't you, about finding that right balance and having a few small treats and really enjoying them, but not completely going off the rail for a fortnight and then struggling to get the weight back off after Christmas. Yeah, it's that it's I always talk to people about like that 80 to 20 percent ratio. You're trying to be mm. eating a well balanced diet 80 percent of the time and 20 percent of the time yeah, that's nice. you relax the reins a little bit. But over the Christmas period you might relax the reins maybe 30 to 40 yeah. percent so your ratio might change just for a few days it's important that you get back to that mm. 80 20 ratio yeah. so you you still allow yourself to you know relax and let go a little bit some of the time but it's the majority that the sort of wider picture isn't it about sort of how you want your life to go in the new year and yeah. sort of keeping on track with your goals I guess yeah. And not undoing any hard work that you've put <laughs> up until that point. I think w- w- probably one other thing to mention is the after dinner coffee. Maybe coffee's a high potassium yeah. drink. So perhaps going, you know, if you've had a lot of high potassium foods in the main event as pudding, then you might want to go for a cup of tea instead or a herbal tea and skip the coffee. Yeah, or just very small, isn't it, with the coffee. It's a shame, isn't it? Because you can almost have that smell of the coffee yeah. that, um, that comes out at Christmas. But yeah, it, it is quite high in potassium, so you do need to be careful. And certainly if you've had coffee earlier in the day or and then you're having another one after dinner. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's about moderation, isn't it? Not too many gingerbread lattes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that probably wraps it up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, my sort of main sort of takeaways were the people that um, have to watch potassium and have to watch fluid, then those are the big ones to just be mindful of, I guess. And if you've got a sort of a high phosphate, you've had a high phosphate and you've got a binder, then use it. Make sure that you have people around to remind you to take it or set an alarm to remind you to put, take put it. Put them on the table. Keep them around. Them, yeah. And see them as a positive because although you know you're having to take these see them as a positive it's allowing you to be a bit more indulgent by using the binders to do that we haven't mentioned cheese at all but we've had like soft cheese which is is lower phosphate than hard cheese but some people will want to have a like a cheese board a small amount of some really strong flavored cheese so just make sure Mm. it's a nice strong one so that you don't need too too much. much of it yeah and then yeah I've just sort of put as well for people that have had a transplant I guess the other 
thing to be careful of is food safety. So if your immune system has been suppressed for your transplant, then be really careful with keeping food and, and reheating leftovers, really. So avoiding any... And other... thoroughly cooking that Christmas turkey. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> Cook things well. So we do show you on the video how to check it's cooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, worth, worth a watch then. Yeah, Definitely want to make sure. The food is thoroughly cooked. Yeah, no food poisoning at Christmas. That's a (laughs) nice present, would it? No. The other thing on that point then is just about sort of, you know, not having anything that's unpasteurized, isn't it? If you're going for a cheese board. And pâtés and that kind of thing. Yeah. Might sort of come out. Just, yeah, be super careful. Have pasteurized things, things in sealed packets. And don't have things that are past the um, use by day. Avoid avoid the deli counter if you've got a transplant. Or the Christmas markets. The Christmas (laughs) markets. Yeah, yeah, and um, you just—it's—it's it's just being very cautious because, of course, your immune system is so overly suppressed with the medication that you're so much more susceptible to food poisoning. So, if you know it's pre-packaged and it's got a use-by date on it, follow that use-by date. Get it in the fridge as soon as possible. Yeah, wipe all your surfaces down. No yeah. contamination. Sort of all the kind of the real basics that are food safety, food hygiene, on the NHS website. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. So do you have a final comment, final word for the listeners? Enjoy your Christmas food. (laughs) I know. Please enjoy it. Please enjoy. (laughs) Dietitians get sort of a bad reputation around, you know, being the the diet police. But um, we actually, we love food and we want everyone to enjoy their food and and we just want to keep you safe as well. So if in doubt, ask. um, Hopefully do allow yourself some treats and, and don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, hopefully this has given people lots of ideas of how they can still enjoy their food. I think plan ahead would be the plan what you're going to have and enjoy what you're going to have. That sounds absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. We've looked at breakfast, starter snacks, main meals, puddings, party foods, buffet foods, alcohol, and also things to avoid and be aware of to stay safe. And as a reminder, there's recipes on the Kidney Kitchen and also Angeline and Laura's cookbook is on the Kidney Care UK website as well. So do check out that for some really tasty and delicious kidney friendly foods. So thank you so much for joining me and for sharing. Like I said, I'm sitting here like I'm actually picturing in my mind all of this lovely Mm -hmm. food and it's making me feel hungry so I think um, I'm gonna go and try a couple of the recipes because they sound really really good but thank you so much for sharing all of this wonderful information thank you so much thank you it's been a privilege yeah thanks Dee thank you for listening to Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast for more kidney friendly recipes and advice visit www.kidneykuk.org forward slash kidney kitchen also available on the Kidney Care UK website is Angeline and Laura's cookbook. Thank you to all my listeners for your support of the podcast throughout 2021. Have a wonderful Christmas and an amazing new year. Look out for exciting content when Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast returns in January 2022. Until next time, take care and choose to live.